thanks for joining me again here on Alma, Missouri for episode 11 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Keep those contracts rolling in, people. I need new gear, I need bigger gear, I need cooler gear. So I need some stuff. I've got a big old um, contract for fertilizing on field 22. I'm considering actually getting a front tank to go with this to increase my capacity because I'm going to be backwards and forwards. I'm not quite sure. Hmm. It seems to me that when I've unloaded previously, it's unloaded bits, not full 1,000 litre fertiliser tubs. I've got like 600 in one, 500 in another, 700. It's, it's weird, it hasn't done full thousands for some reason. Anyway, I've got stuff to do. I'm cracking on with the uh, corn harvest contract I've got as well. Putting some hours on our new old X9 harvester and it is going like a dream. The Titan corn header runs at 10 miles an hour, which I said in the previous episode. It, it doesn't seem like a lot, but from 6 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour makes a massive difference. So, uh, yeah, we'll crack on with this. I have to say, that corn harvest, whoa, lucrative, I've just completed, um, I wasn't paying attention so I actually overloaded a little bit more than I could have done. I have pour, already put a full load into the railroad silo because the contract completed and um, I don't know why I drove back through there, and the contract completed and I still had stuff left in the harvester and on the ground. Um, so I've got 19,200 here and I've got a full load's worth in the silo, 33 and a bit thousand litres. So loads of corn. That harvest though, <laughs> I did hire a worker. Um, what were we on when we bought the when we bought the second hand harvester, the X9, it was on 16 hours. Uh, we are on 18 something now? 19! <laughs> Crikey. It took a while, um, but we got it done. Uh, and also, you saw, I had the rear fertilizer spreader, which is fine, and the, and the um, it was working fine. But because I had a fertilizing contract on field 22, which is a big field, I came back a couple of times. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to get the front tank. So I got the uh, the Vedestat front tank. That's 2,200 liters. Add to that the 32. Is that? I can't remember what it was, it was now. I think it's sure it's 32. Um, so for fertilising, big fertilising contracts, that combination works out really well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put our corn into our grain mill and we're going to start making corn flour. 
don't know whether to put it all in. I mean, I'll put all of I'll put all of that load in, but the the other load I've got, I'm not too sure what to do really. Um, where were we here? I mean, did this last time, didn't I? It was around here somewhere. Where was it? There we go. Um, so grain mill. Nineteen thousand two hundred liters. We want to do corn flour. Let's get that running. Then the corn flour and the butter will go to the bakery. And we can make cornbread. And I also said about um, doing sweet cornbread. We've got sugar beet, so I might find a process somewhere. There's a few knocking around. One that works fairly efficiently, and I can transform my sugar beet. I might have to do some sugar beet cut as well, so I might have to cut some of it. Uh, and we can get some sugar going. Or I could just sell it and buy sugar. I mean, either way, you know, so we can get some sweet cornbread going as well. So cornbread and sweet cornbread. That's the plan. We'll get onto that in a little while. So that's chugging. I'm going to go and get the trailer load anyway. And then I can decide whether to put... I'm just thinking, that 19,000 is... What was the recipe? Uh, for... I think it was just is it a one-to-one. Corn flour, 15 to 13. So we lose a little bit. Um, so we'll get less than 19,000 litres left, so that'd be 19 pallets. Might do a little bit more in there. I always go back to the farm, and then I've got baling to do. Now, as far as the baling goes, uh, where, where's my contracts? That's completed, 33,000. Let's collect on that. Um, what else have we got here? Harvesting sugar beets. I want to do those baling contracts. That one's um, for silage bales, that one's for hay bales. But because I was having problems with that hitch, and I have been testing it to see you know, whether it's just on here, but it's not. Um, HMG watched the video and messaged and said, what about one of the bar hitches? No, that's the one I want. Um, so if we go down to miscellaneous here, and we pick up uh, one of those, the trailer attacher support. So if we buy that for 100. And then what we'll do, on our three-point link on the back of our mower, we can either attach our tether straight on, but because the baler's not attaching for some reason, um, if I put that support on, then the baler should attach to that, which is attached to the three-point link. It's a bit convoluted, but we, that should work. Um, I haven't tried it yet. We'll give it a go. So I'm going to go and get some more corn. I'm going to put some more into the um, the grain mill. And then we'll uh, get the rest back over to the farm. I'll get the harvester back. Um, I didn't even look. Where were those contracts? Field 40 and field 35. Field 40. Okay, that's oh, I was right next to us there. And 35's there. I took all my stuff back, didn't I? So I'm going to have to come back again, aren't we? That's a big old field, isn't it? Because it goes right way around there as well. Now that baler that I bought, the quick, quick bale, I've done it again, got the wrong side, um, that now has been changed capacities. We can do a 10,000 litre, 25,000 litre, or 50,000 litre bale. So I'm going to stick it on in 10s, um, and we'll just see how that kind of pans out with regard to delivery. There we go. I need to lease some gear as well. We're going to need a forage harvester for doing our corn. I put in the silage clamp. Do it. I'll put a little bit more in. I'm still debating. The debate does continue. Um, people saying about whether or not I should be swathing the alfalfa or whether I can just mow it. I mean, in I can do whatever I want to do. I can, I can do it either. Um, but the, I think it comes down to the... Um, I mean, it's interesting, like I said, because Cole the Corn stuff, because his brother Cooper, they mow theirs and bale it. Because um, I was going to say, it's mostly American subscribers that are saying, no, it has to be swathed. You don't just mow alfalfa. 
but I've seen American farmers doing it online. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Why So I think we'll make it into hay. If we mow it, it'll be for hay. We're not going to silage it. I think that was the other thing people said as well. Alfalfa is not usually used for silage work. They'll use grass and stuff like that, or you know, crops. Maize silage. So I think when I first did it, I tested it with maize, didn't I? When we first came onto alfalfa, I tested the alfalfa in the silage clamp to see whether or not it would take it, and it did. And that was one of the things that people said that you wouldn't normally use alfalfa for silage. Um, so that's the other thing. So I think I'll mow it. We'll mow it, ted it, and then we'll bale it for hay because we're going to need it. We need to make total, total mix ration. We got through the winter. We've got plenty of silage on the go in the silage camp, and we'll be doing maize silage now as well. Um, so it's hay that I really want to be working on. I need to get a load of hay bales. That's why I took on that hay baling contract. Um, and we've got all of our alfalfa. So yeah, that's I think that's what we're going to do. I still need to put up a big shed to put all of our bales under. Um, because I did leave them out through the winter and that probably hasn't done the uh, straw bales and we're going to need a load more straw as well so at some point we're going to need to do some harvest work where we get some straw or I buy it, I don't really want to buy it in that's not the plan I'm starting to wonder if I've turned off the... Um Uh, let's switch that to grain bin. There we go, in goes our corn. I haven't switched this off, have I? One seven four five. Oh, that's still running. It's on storing. All good, right. Yeah, so what do I do? Um have I got room to put a shed? I suppose I could put a shed here. Next to our cold storage, put a large shed here for our bales. Or we might be able to fit it next to that. Because I put, I was intending to put my other side of the camp next here, but I wasn't quite sure how big this was going to be. I was also asked, um, a couple of people asked me, I think Tom was one of them, about why I decided to put the factory here and not in the town. Um, I wanted to sort of do the diversification of the farm, how we're diversifying into other areas to make extra money, um, soup being one of them, and I wanted to have the, the sort of the plant here at the farm location rather than in town, so it's kind of how we're expanding the farm, not just with regard to farming but also factory based things as well. I, I don't, I'm trying to think if I've got one. Um, and a shed. So have I got the large metal shed? I've used it quite a lot. I do like it. That one's pretty good. The hay shed. 35 grand. But I'm sure there's a cheaper one. I don't think I've got it installed, have I? It's the metal shed. Is it... I want to say black sheet modding. It might not be black sheet modding. I can't remember how it's by. I'm sure it's cheaper than that. I mean, that's massive as well, isn't it? So that... I mean, we could put it around the back here, I guess. Like that. I don't think it'll fit. Oh, it might fit between there. It does actually. I mean, it's not. It is absolutely gargantuan, isn't it? Kind of links diagonally all of our our large machinery shed and our cooling shed. And hmm. I'll have a look. See what else is available. Right, corn's in. That's sorted. Get the harvester back. And then let's get cracking. I was oh, I wanted to get my I wanted to get the the may silage underway. I don't know whether not to do the baling off camera because I've done some baling already, haven't I? Or maybe just start it off and then because I, I want to get this this sorted. Woo! I want to get this sorted. What have we got available for that? Again, I don't think I've got the one I was going to use. Or have I? I have. There you go. The Jaguar 695. We've got the Colossus. That will go... That's, that's, you know, it's awesome and it's bonkers and it will go super fast and that kind of thing. But I think if we're going for a more standard, we'll just get it done, you know? Just small, sensible, 
410 horsepower, 64 grand. We're going to lease it, not buy it. I go for those. Additional weight. Do I want additional weight on the back? No, I don't think so. Silage additive tank. That's not going to work if we're doing corn, is it? Not bother about license plate. No plate. If we lease that, 3,264. Can't odds that at all. Let's lease that. Then we want a corn header for that, not a corn header, a forage header. What do we go for? There's not one that comes with this, is there? Or is there? Ah, oh, there is. Six row. Mm, 5.3 metres. Nine metres. Nines, nines. 7.5. I'm just worried that a larger header. I'm able to go for a 6 metre. But it's not much bigger than the other one, is it? 5 point something. 5.3 or 6. I'll just go for that. The 5 point, the one that comes with it. You know what? I'm going to do that. No, I'm not sure if it'll attach that trailer. That is a pin hitch, isn't it? No, it's a ball. Um, we'll give it a go. If not, we might have to lease a trailer. Right, let's go and grab my mowing, my mowing gear. Field 40 was the hay, wasn't it? Yeah. So we will pick that up. We'll pick that up. And with three point on the back, we'll pick that up. Let's go to fill forward. We have the forager. I have leased uh, a different trailer because the other one's a ball hitch. This one's a pin hitch. This is a 30,000 litre uh, trailer. Now what I would normally do, if I was doing a contract, for, if I was silaging, if I was taking stuff a long distance to the silage clamp, I would have two of these. So I could set a worker off to fill this trailer. And then what I would do, I would swap the trailers. So I'd disconnect the one that's full, connect up and empty, send them off again. Then I would take the full trailer back to the silage clamp so that forage wagon is continually working. Not forage wagon, forage harvester, sorry. Um, but to be fair, the field's there. 
So I've just leased one of these. I could have leased two. You can hook them together so I could fill up one and then I'd just swap them over. You know, there's, there's all different ways around of doing it. So what we'll do, pipe out, go to the front, open that up, beacon off. And then, start her up. We are doing main silage. There we go. It's going to be interesting to see the yield. And away we go. All the way through the winter. Well, once the crop was kind of it was ready to go, I was thinking I just need the snow to stop. I need the snow to go. I just want to get on here and get this done. This is going to fill up really quick. This is a massive field. I think what we're going to do, or what I'm what I'm intending doing, at 30,000 litres a, a, a load, it's going to take a while. And everything I'm doing is taking a while. That's not a problem either. Um, that's that silage clamp I put in that I'm going to do separate side, like I said. It doesn't matter in game, I know it doesn't matter in game. Um, the chaff that's in this is no different to if I did grass or did any other crop. It's coming through and it's showing as chaff. But for the sake of, you know, because I'm doing corn, maize, and if this is forage maize, I would have it in a separate clamp. So I would have my regular silage, my regular clamp, and then you would have a maize clamp. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to run the separate maize clamp. Now, we're going to get to a bit in a minute. <laughs> right here. <laughs> Not quite an alien crop circle. Um... This field here, way back in the winter, early in the winter, I had a cultivating contract on here, didn't I? And I've got my two cultivators. I was running one, I had a worker running the other. You know, higher workers or dire workers. Um, the worker decided it got... To, I, I went round the edge of the field, I did two runs round the edge to give myself a nice border so the worker would get to the edge, to the border, turn round and go back. Nope. The worker just carried straight on and I was, I was going I'm looking at the map and I'm thinking hang on a minute by the time I got to him it crossed over here and gone through gone through into my corn crop which on the scale of things if we zoom up I mean it's, it's a it's a tiny bit on the scale of the field but it's still really frustrating <laughs> really frustrating so yeah that's why that's there <sighs> what are you gonna do Grab on the tractors out up here so when I do stop I can swap. I, mean, I, I suppose I should be running two trailers, shouldn't I? It would make more sense, wouldn't it? I want to make sure the cows are looked after. Um, and what I'm intending to do as well, I said there's loads more to do on it, there is tons more to do on it. Um, we'll get sheep, we're going to get the sheep in. So when I can, I can do grass work. I can get a load of mowing done, we can get a load of grass done, or I can just do hay so I can feed them that. If I do a load of the alfalfa, I do it all as hay. It doesn't matter then, I've got it then for either making salt mix rational feed into the sheep. If I've got enough of it, we'll be golden. If I pick up baling contracts, any bales that are left over from silage baling or hay baling, we'll keep, we'll store, we'll be good to go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy. I do like these. Is this the ears? I'm trying to think. Is it E123? I think it's E123. When I went to Farm Con 19, way back, and we were at class at Haas of Inkle, and I went around the class museum there. These old foragers and the old gear, just wow. And that's 60 grand to buy. So if you want to do forage work, and forage harvesters are 300, 400, 500 grand a pop, this is doing exactly what the other ones do. I mean, I haven't tried it with a larger header. I could probably put a 7.5 on it and probably still run it. But you can't answer that, can you? 
there's a few of these knocking around, but nearly at 30,000 litres, and I haven't even, well, I'm not even close to doing the full circuit. So I reckon that silage tank we are going to fill up 500,000 litres in no time. Once I hit 500,000 litres and that's full, the rest of this field I will corn harvest with my harvester. And we'll put that into storage. I could put another clamp in if I wanted to, but I'm just thinking with the clamp we've got already, with bales that we might do... And... Um, what was I going to say? There you go, 30,000 litres. So, turn that off, back that up a little bit. Yeah, see what I would normally do is like an X pattern at this point. So I would do that, I would come off that, I would come across, hook up onto a second one, and then set a worker off to crack on with that while I took the other one back. Well, I haven't got a worker, I haven't got a second trailer at the moment, so. Oh, it's good, it's good, I'm gonna go get a trailer. Let's get the first load in of our maize silage and I'll continue I've got loads to do first load of many going in I think I I think I might hire a worker because I've got the bailing contract to do as well I think what I might do is lease a second trailer these trailers are like 900 and something to lease I'm gonna lease the second one I think yeah and I'll hire a worker then I can get with the bailing now the question is Another reason why I like this, because it's got a pin hitch, is because it's um, direct connect, it's not a swivel hitch. Uh, uh, um, yeah, you know what I mean. So I can come into this from the back. Now this is, like I said, I've put the second lip on here as well, so we'll see how this works. So what I might do is come in from the other end, back up and load. Unload, sorry. So I can change that. Up. What should happen is that doesn't go beyond that lip yeah look. oh hang on that's not supposed to do that hmm that's curious so it's not supposed to do that it's supposed to come to that gutter see what would normally happen is that would great continue to fill up and it would spill out of the back and it's not supposed to that's what the point of these are I'll show you I talked about it I don't know if I showed you did I so under silos, this particular set. So that's the silo. Did I show these? Anyway, that's the silo. And then we've got a blocking wall, so you can block the end if you want to. Um, but then you've also got a flat section. You've got the ramp section. So if I wanted to, I could just spin that all the way around. And we could ramp at the back. So we're only loading in. I know I'm standing in the way. So we could load like that. So we can load in from the back from the ramp, which is pretty cool. But this bit here, bunker silo tipping free area. It says this object is placed in front of the bunker silo to prevent bulk material from falling out of the silo. Place the ground stains outside of the silo. So when it looks like that, see the ground stains? All you do is you line that gutter up with that, with the stains to the outside, and it's supposed to stop that from spilling out when you're compacting and stuff. That's the point. Anyway. Details should be in description. I'm going to set a worker off. I'm going to go and get another trailer. I think I'm definitely going to set a worker off. Absolument. Let's see how much of the field it will take to get 500,000 litres in there.
the main silaging is going great i've got a worker going on there i'm bouncing between the two the uh, mowing and tedding is going fine i must before the end of the episode test out that bar to see if i can run the triple mower with the baler behind it to do silage bales so i need to jump over to the other field um we're gonna get a lot i mean even running ten thousand litre bales with that quick bale we're gonna have so many bales off this field which is brilliant it means we'll have a load of bales we'll have a load of hay bales to um for ourselves which is you know kind of part and parcel of doing the contract bonus for the contract if we get any bales left over bonus for the farm you know yeah it's a bit of time taken but no different to any contracts on any map i've ever done you know how i am i'll see you in a bit hopefully when we've got a full clamp 500,000 liters of maize silage or maize chaff anyway As you've just seen, the baling situation, <laughs> bearing in mind I'm doing 10,000 litre bales, we're up to 53 bales, that's 530,000 litres, and I don't even think I'm halfway across what everything needs to be baled. It's going to be well over a million litres of hay bales. I'm going, to have to, I'm going to have to get rid of some before I finish the contract, because with the bales I've got sat there, we're going to hit the bale limit, I think, um, even at 10,000 litre bales. The other thing as well is my uh, maize clamp here... <laughs> I've gone above 500,000 litres already. I'm sure it said it was 500,000 litres, the, the size of the clamp. Um, I think we're up to 518,000 litres already. And we've got plenty of room left. If I can get this up to the top of there. Now I know this would normally, you wouldn't be doing like this with the trailer. You'd dump it at the front and you'd push it up with something. Yeah, 543,000 litres in there at the moment. That's another 30,000 litres in. And the thing as well, because I put those let those things at the front, when I keep filling, it will hit that front. It should hit that front and not go any further than that. So I can keep filling right to the... This is going to take... I'm going to say potentially 700,000 litres, you know. I'm, I'm going to fill it. I say I'm going to fill it. If we look at our field... Where are we? Here. And we look at our growth i mean we're we're over halfway I mean, i'm looking at the bulge that side the bulge that side we're over halfway so we're going to fill this clamp before we run out of corn which means i'll be able to do a little bit more corn harvesting we'll put some more corn in the silo and um, if we want to sell that we want to use it for something else we can i might i might buy the corn dryer actually and we can dry some corn down as well i don't want to put it all in to make corn flour um if we do dried corn, then we can do the super fine stuff, can't we, I think, as well? Yeah, so we've got options. I just wanted to check in again and say, look, this is where we're at. We've gone all the way across here. You know, I didn't set the worker off again. I don't know why I didn't do that. I was just too excited. Right, I'm stopping there. And I should tell you for why. I could probably get a little bit more in there. We're up to 640,000 litres in here, so I could probably top it up a little bit. But if I run the harvester and get another 
30,000 litres, I don't think I'll squeeze 30,000 in. So knowing quite how much I can squeeze in, you know, I could end up with three quarters of a trailer load of chaff I can't do anything with. Um, because my other silo has still got silage in it, so I could tip it into that if it was empty, that kind of thing, but I can't. So what I'll do is um, I'll stop there. Obviously this is going to have to be compacted. I'm going to probably do that with the telehandler, which I've done before. Um, I'm not sure if this is wide enough, because what I'll often do is put a telehandler on full lock, just go around, 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 around. Um, or what I might do, there was, oh, there was a compactor recently that I reviewed that was phenomenal. I'll have to have a look for it, see if I can find that. So yeah, happy with that. If we look back on here at our field, we've got uh, maybe a third of the field left third of the field which we can harvest regularly we've got rain coming it's showing the clouds are starting to build so that's that part done happy with that i was going to do half corn half silage but oh we've got our first soup soup potato soup sorted i'll tell you what today's going great because not only that that baling contract i finished doing the baling it's the biggest baling contract I've ever undertaken on any map. And if you've been watching my Let's Plays for a while, you know I don't mind doing a baling contract. Griffin, I did an absolute load of baling contracts. Um, what else did I do? Oh, there was another one I did a load of baling contracts on. I, I love doing baling contracts. It's good money. Get bales left over. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, we're going to whiz over there because I need to check out and see if I can get that silly, if I can get the um, wrapping to work with that bar. Um, we cleared 100 bales. I think 100, we'll have to check the bale, 108, 109. So that's over a million litres at 10,000 litres of bale. I've never done that much on a baling contract. I've done some fairly large ones. I just keep thinking if I'd used a standard baler that was doing, say, 5,000 litre bales, 5,500 litre bales, it would have been double that, nearly double that. That's nuts. Absolutely nuts. Um, I'm just going to see. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Everything is just chugging away. It's doing what it should be. Let's take that off. But, I mean, I, I could just go back as well. I'm just thinking if I can find... I can't remember which one it was. What compactor it was. But it was just... It surprised me. I wasn't expecting it to be so good when I reviewed it. And it was brilliant. So fast. So what I'd normally do... Get up on the clamp. Yeah, it's not It's not a big enough clamp, I don't think, to get all the way... No, I'm not going to get round without falling off it. That's frustrating. Yeah, so I would normally just stick it on full lock and go round and round in circles. But uh, that's going to take absolutely ages. As you can see, we've just driven backwards and forwards and it hasn't gone up at all. It's not really heavy enough. I'm going to need something to compact it a little bit better. So what we'll do, and as you'll see, driving off the front, because I've got those things, normally, as you squash the, the clamp down, you would get stuff spilling out the front. Not so. Is that HMG as well? I'm sure that was HMG. Anyway. Quality. Quality. Let's go over to that baler. Check that out. And I'll see if I can find that compact. If I can, I'll go to the store and get it. And I'll, I'll end sort of by doing the compacting. I need to go over to that field, check on the baler, see if we can get the silage baling going. Um, I'm probably going to be close to my limit of bales. Um, so I'm going to need to get a bale loader of some description so I can start delivering them for the contract. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? I'm that fast. That fast. Let's jump in here. How are we looking? 110. 1.1 million litres of hay at 10,000 litres of bale. <laughs> That's crazy. Now I could have, because this baler now will do 25,000 litre bales and 50,000 litre bales. Um, but the problem is when you're doing a contract, there's always a risk. If you do something like 50,000 litre bales, you could get to a point where you could unload one bale, it will complete the contract, and you could then get paid for 40,000 litres of hay. Whereas if I do 10,000 litre bales, I could drop off, you know, a couple when I get close to however many I need to deliver to complete the contract, and I gain more bales to keep myself. It, you know, I could have done it with far less bales. But if I'd done it with a standard baler, it would have been way more bales. And that goes on 
right the way across this field and over into that next bit on the other side of the field as well. I've never done 110. I'm sure I haven't on a contract. Anyway, so what we've got to do, drop that off. We need to hook this to this. Now, I'm pretty sure the PTO is not going to hook up. As you can see there, the PTO hooks through, which is great. Uh, let's hook that up. If I disconnect the tether, we'll come back and collect it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. If we put our front one on. Nope. There we go. Now we've got a three-point line. So this is all just because that the, 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 the hitch isn't working for some reason. Right. Okay, that's on. So it's whether or not this will now hook up to the baler. Please work. Oh! Did the PTO attach? No, it didn't. It's attached to the cables, but not the PTO. Oh, the other thing I was going to say as well, this baler, I've got silage additive in it. When I was doing the hay, it was using silage additive. So as far as I'm aware, I was getting a bonus. Bonus! So yeah, that's cool. Now, do I want to reset the bale counter? 110 for that. So that stays as my continual... There's 110, the ongoing baling. Uh, we want field 35. I just want to check to make sure this will work. I'm going to leave it on 125s, which is the 10,000 litre bales. And let's see how we get on here, shall we? So we want to go to that and that. Go to the front, do that. Pop that down. Uh, that. Turn that on. Drop that down. Then go to our baler. Turn that on. Okay. Let's see how we get on. Want to hit 10,000 litres? This is, this is just to test this. I'll go back and we'll start the clamp. 10,000 litres, please wrap. Oh, 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 nicely. Not particularly if I can hit the tree, yeah. Good thing is the pickup as well on the baler is brilliant. Okay, that's working. Brilliant. Thank you, HMG. You are a legend. The end of a leg. You are awesome. Thank you. I had this before on one of the other ones. It was when I was using the fence. I think it's because the weight of the baler on the back is lifting the front end a little bit. That's all right. I can come around and tidy other bits up. Right. That is working. Brilliant stuff. So I suppose what I should really do before I can do this one is um, get something to pick up the bales for the other one. I think I'm going to go for an auto stack. Um, I was looking at auto load trailers, but I think I'll go for an auto stack. See how far out I can get on here, because sometimes it won't let you cut the grass. I'll go out as far as I can, as I always do when I'm doing baling contracts. If I can cut outside the field edge and gain some extra bales, why not? Might as well. It's always worth giving it a shot. Sometimes it won't let you, sometimes it will. Sometimes if you go one way around the field, it will let you. Sometimes you go back the other way, it won't, and vice versa. So it's always worth overlapping a little bit to gain yourself a bit extra. Especially with silage bales, because if you're going to sell them, um, you might as well gain as many as you can. Why not? Right. Result... We'll go back out a little bit further. There we go. Let's get the lights on. Just to gain a little bit more. Like I say, I can get a bit extra. Why not? Right, I will see over the clamp. I'll see if I can find which one it was. I'm not sure I'm going to remember, but if I can, I'll grab it. And we'll see if we can get that clamp compacted nice and quickly. I'm just thinking, actually, what have we got available with regards to bale loaders I think it's only going to be the RBM 2000 
I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that's going to work with the bales. They're 10,000 litres, but they're a standard size. It's not like they're 10,000 litres and overly sized. That ultimate mowing and baling pack, that comes with a rear hitch, that one. If you want it with a rear hitch, but that's for square bales, and we're doing round. Um, because I've mixed and matched, if we go to our balers, part of the ultimate mowing and baling pack does come with these extra balers. So all these balers are part of the ultimate mowing and baling pack, square and round, and wrapper. Um, but obviously I've gone for a different baler to go with the ultimate mowing and baling pack. So, But like I say, that has always worked before. It's only since, well both of these have had an update fairly recently, it's only since they've been updated that the quick, quick bale won't hook on to the trailer hitch for the mower. Yeah, I oh, know it's a weird one. Anyway, I will see if I can find this um, compactor. I'm not sure if these are even the right ones. <laughs> We're about to find out. I think, I don't know, I think they are. On the back, the lizard roller pack. On the front, the lizard silo roller. Um, yeah. <laughs> details in the description what I'll do I'll try one then try the other and see which one works best and then what I can do is do them both why not uh, let's disconnect that to start off with and let's just roll over I don't think I have to turn this on do I no it should just be a case of a bit of rolling if I can even get up there of course oh yeah that's good no, diff no problem being because it's quite um, it sticks out quite a long way but yeah, I mean we've gone I drove across there with the telehandler went backwards and forwards twice nothing happened I've been backwards and forwards what three times now and I'm 17 18 19 oh yes she's a beaut right okay that's working 20 keep going keep going lovely job lovely job nothing squeezing out the front that thing's working doing its thing right so, I wonder if I can attach just whether this one will work off the front. No reason why not, is there? It doesn't have to be off the back. Let's see how this one works. And if it works really well, I suppose I can run above, couldn't I? Can I get up there with this though? Come on, just need to get some traction. There we go. Right, just need to be turned on. No, nope, just drop down. No, that's... I mean, it's... Maybe it is supposed to be on the back. We're still on 22, 23. And we're going a lot slower as well. So I'm not sure. I will try it on the back, just in case. Like I say, I don't want to do it a disservice. It might be the perfect implement. But I've got a funny feeling the lizard roller pack... Wins! You are the winner! I will try it. Just, you know. Just because. I mean, you mate, if you're doing this on a really big clamp and you can ro roll backwards and forwards and go much further, you mean, you'll clear the clamp in no time. Let's try this again. Yeah, it's still quite slow. It's 24. Yeah, it's not as not as efficient so like I say we do have a winner and in all honesty as well I'm pretty sure to lease these this one it's like a mod review isn't it <laughs> I'm doing the testing so you don't have to this one was 346 to lease that was like 97 or something it was it was dirt cheap so I've got a load of barrels to collect and deliver I've got Silage bales to make. I did take on another baling contract, didn't I? I did. I've got three on the go. That's the silage baling one. That's the other one. That's a twenty percent complete. That's got to be delivered. And then I've got another one there for um, hay bales. So I'll get those done. And uh, oh yeah, which I think as well. I, I did find which one it was under sheds. It was um, black sheet modding. Got these ones as well. The lean twos, I do like those. This one here, vehicle shelter, 12,500 compared to 35. It's still a big building, but I reckon, you know, 
stick our bales in that or do I want to do it around the back here like I said I think that might work that say 12.5 and it was saying 12.5 to buy you know what I think can I get it in cheaper 12.5 oh hang on did I flicker there of 12.5 bang on the nose come on <sighs> boom we're having it <laughs> vehicle shelter done but that's going to be for our bales. We're going to put all our bales under there. So in inclement weather, our bales will be fine. So all those bales will get moved into here. Any bales I get load left over from the contracts I'm doing now or any other subsequent contracts. And if I've still got space, then I can always put vehicles and machinery in here. Um, this cornfield, I've got the rest of the corn to be harvested. And then this has got to be ploughed and prepped. Uh, carrots are good to go. And so is our alfalfa. So... As I keep saying, I've got loads to be cracking on with. We haven't even started on the sheep yet. <laughs> I'm the sort of man that starts on sheep. Come on, son. Have it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. As always, thanks for watching. <laughs>